All right, we're live. Welcome, guys. Welcome to the journey within. This is a journey of deconstruction and reconstruction, of a death and rebirth. And today I am so excited and honored to be with Miriam from Consciousness Evolution. Miriam, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Justin, for having me. I'm excited. <laughs> and I love your intro on like every video, you know, it's like, Hi, it's Miriam. Oh, yeah. I just I Hi, love it. It's Miriam. <laughs> I know the little sun hand. Yes. <laughs> like the sunrise. I don't even know about that. I guess I'm just sitting here and it's it will be odd from outside in. Yeah. So since I'm, I'm kind of cross like this. I just go like <laughs> Ah, it's the wax on, wax off, karate kid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's well, funny. But yeah, I, I try I remember starting when I started the YouTube channel and you know you going here all these people like making suggestions on how you should do and they're like you should have an intro and i really really tried but it just didn't feel like me like making all this like long intro or this or that and i was like i think hi <laughs> it's just hi fine. is good I'm like, hi. right <laughs> i think it works <laughs> but um maybe you could like introduce yourself like how would you describe who you are and and what you do okay sure um well, I started my spiritual path around 2019, um, kind of like by accident. <laughs> um, I've been um, practicing yoga and teaching since 2004. So I was already familiar, you know, with connecting with our bodies, with our breath, like meditation and stuff. But I wasn't really like deep into the spirituality part of it. Um, I was Catholic for 30 years and then I was Christian for eight years. So, you know, I was still pretty much a little bit attached to religion and things like that. Um, and didn't really study much in depth other than practicing, you know, controlling my physical body and controlling my mind uh, when it came to yoga practice. Um, I saw spiritual. Oh, no. Is it me? Uh-oh. Um, okay, we're oh. back. Oh, or, okay, I see you I here. don't know, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it was my side or your side or what, but, but yeah. So basically, you know, um, in 2018, I divorced after 18 years of marriage. And that is when um, the self-healing started and that took me to um just looking for answers like why was i feeling this feelings why i was unhappy like all those things um and i just literally grabbed youtube and started finding something like i remember that i had read um in my early teens from louise hay i had read her book um you can heal your life and i remember that book helped me so much back then when i was in my teens so I kind of searched for it, audiobook, and then one thing took me to another. Like I wanted to break from financial burden because um, I had just divorced and I was like, this is not possible. Like, this is not what I want for my life. Like, you know, um, so I started like just literally looking for videos like how to make money, like how to overcome debt, like things like that. And one thing took me to another and I just couldn't stop learning and all in this meantime i um i learned i or i heard something from louise hay that said um just ask like the universe or whatever and those were kind of like new concepts for me i felt like the universe was something separate from us and all those things and but i still did it anyways because i trusted her and she such a loving person right like her energy if you're familiar with louise hay she already passed but such a loving energy and I was like, okay, I'm gonna do it. Um, and she said, ask and say, I am open and ready to receive. So I had no clue what I was being open and ready to receive, but I just started doing that. <laughs> and just information started like reaching me out, like literally, and then it was like some sort of force um, possessed me. Like, I mean, not like a demonic possession, but <laughs> I just like couldn't stop um, in the, 
like in the learning like it's like i was so hungry to just have some answers and some guidance and some like just some direction like where what is this and i feel like ever since i was a little girl i had been more of a loner and questioning life um like why are we here like all those things like why do we have to do that why do we have to go to religion but i was always the quiet kind and not like ruffling feathers just yeah. internalizing like why why do we do this why do we behave like this why do we have to um i don't know like wear makeup or do this like why 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 can't we just chill out why do families have to split out and go to work and go to school like what's the point of a family if everybody splits out so i always had those things going um and always grew up like i did have friends and stuff but it was more like you know i was kind of like the weirdo and <laughs> and i was constantly asked like if i was on drugs or something because i always really? had this like ideas <laughs> you know and I, was, I never did that and i'm like no this is like my natural self like i just i just go into things i guess like right so that is what took me to my first spiritual awakening back in 2019 when i started like healing myself and doing affirmations and whatever to bring up my self-esteem and things like that um and that took me to my first spiritual awakening and which was in april 2019 and that was um that was the beginning of it <laughs> pretty yeah. much yeah. What do you think? What what caused the spiritual awakening? Was it was it the affirmations? Was it the healing? I think uh, personally, I think it was just a mix of all the things that I started doing. Um, for some reason, I started thinking about I want to open my third eye, and I really had no clue. Even though I had been teaching yoga for a long time, I think I was teaching more the physical stuff and the breathing and not really going into the depths of all the etheric bodies and all those things like you know to me they were kind of like you know like crazy stuff like i'm like that's for hippies or something <laughs> so for some reason i just felt like you know what i'm just gonna try that i'm gonna open my third eye i wish i didn't even know what it was but i again i went on youtube and i started like open your third eye and there was a bunch of frequencies and a bunch of things on what to do and how to do it and and you know and i literally started trying everything i'm like you know what i'm at a point in my life that i feel very very screwed um like life is just going like crazy like i don't know what's gonna happen with my life and it was a very scary moment and i felt very lonely in my decision of divorce and all those things right it's like i was breaking all societal rules of what I should be doing as a Hispanic person, as a woman, as a Catholic, you know, as a mother, all those things just, I literally said like, screw it, fuck it. Like, I'm gonna do what I want. Like, it's like, I came to this point, right? Out of painful experiences in the past. Um, just realizing, oh my gosh, I've been like the good girl for all those years and where did it take me? <laughs> like nowhere right plus i'm unhappy so that's when um you know i did that and i think the combination of everything like i started reprogramming myself and learning about subconscious mind reprogrammation like how it works and what it does and i just came upon so many amazing books and so many amazing teachers some of them ancient some of them modern i came to it's like one video, you know how the algorithms pull a thing and another and another, right? Yeah. But now looking back at it, it's like, I understand and know that those things were meant for me, right? Just how everything else is for our path. So um, what I think that triggered this spiritual awakening was um, sexual healing. I had some sexual trauma and when I decided to face that and let go of it um, and just be like, you know what, this is what I want and I'm not going to feel bad about it, you know, about wanting a healthy sexual life and connection, um, ditching, um, you know, 
Catholic rules and, and Hispanic rules, and you have to stay married to the same person no matter what, and all those things, right? As a female, as a Hispanic, all these things. Um, when I decided to break him, um, you know, and I started dating this person and really feeling comfortable in my skin and in my sexuality, I think that really unblocked um, that creative chakra within me. Because, um, you know, the um, Swadhisthana, the sexual chakra, the orange chakra is, is like um, directly linked to our creativity and to the expression of who we are, right? And I feel that that really opened up and started like bubbling things up for me. And from there, I got into the Manipura chakra, which is the solar plexus, which is the one taking action. Because um, I, I was raised to kind of like just do what I was told. And then in the marriage, it was kind of like the same. So once I got into this, it was all about finding my power and taking action for myself, taking decisions for myself. As simple as what do I want to wear today? Like decisions that a lot of people can seem as basic that have not grown under certain abuse or certain, you know, society restrictions or things like that. Um, but I started seeing everything just so differently. Um, and this spiritual awakening, I knew it, it came with a, with a physical pain. Um, as far as I know, for the people that I have spoken with about spiritual awakenings, they are quite different for most people, but there are certain things that are like very much alike, right? Like like that third eye opening, which is all the same. The Kundalini rising, you know, third eye opening, spiritual awakening, this is all the same, right? Uh, activating your Merkava, like all those things are basically the same thing. And, you know, um, I did have this like physical pain in my heart. Like I thought I was having a heart attack. Oh. And right after that, because I didn't know what it was. And right after that, I think I went, you know, into what most people call the dark night of the soul. I think I was about that for about a month. Um, really bad. I thought I was going crazy. I didn't know I was under a spiritual awakening, to be honest, until way later. <laughs> but at the moment, all I could Oh no. She'll come back at some point. Stopped again. Okay, we're back. <laughs> All right, we're right back. <laughs> like, yeah, so basically that's I was just taking one day at a time because I was I was at this same time I was um experiencing financial burden. Um I didn't have my visa. I didn't know if I was going to be sent back to my country and my kids were going to be kept in here. I mean, I was going through a lot of things at the same time, um, but I really decided to go fully in myself. Like I was like, you know what? I'm just going to dive in and get to the point and get to the uh, like root of all these things. So like I said, one book took me to another one, one, um, teacher to the other and I came to so much information right like about alien life and about light workers and and about like you know like I said like activating your DNA codes and twin flames and just like so many things and I remember listening to I think it was Louise Hay as well that you say you can ask for acceleration in the process and I was like, I'm tired of waiting my whole life for this or for that, you know? And I was like, just bring it all in. I'm like, I'm like, whatever's gonna happen, dump it all at once. And it it did, it did happen. And it was brutal, but I don't regret it at all. But it was brutal in the sense that really my whole life just like shifted everything, information, Oh. What where is this taking me? What is 
where is this going? Like, but I just knew I needed to find answers to whatever the questions, which I don't even know how clear the questions were. I just needed to, I just needed to know like, why am I here? Why, what is this? Like, why do I have to experience this? And why did this whole world like shattered? You know, when your third eye is open, when your intuition is open, when you really connect with source and to this spiritual realms and you have this mystical experience, it's like life is never the same again. You will never see life the same again. So, yeah, I think, and that's the first one that I had. Then I had another one in 2021. Same thing on April. So two years, exactly. Oh, wow. So maybe and every two years, huh? Yeah, two years apart. And I didn't even know you could have another one, right? But I thought I was done. I'm like, okay, cool, I'm done. I reached a comfortable plateau. I think I'm, you know, everything is pretty and whatever. So that time I was trying to do a quantum jump, um, which I didn't quite understand it very well, but I was like, I'm gonna quantum jump. So I, I did that for two weeks obsessively, like I got a quantum jump, I got a quantum jump, right? To this like reality that I wanted to experience. And that is when I met my twin flame and I met a bunch of people on the spiritual path. Like, I mean, I'm talking like thousands were flooding my Facebook and I was like, what's happening? Like, it's like, I, you really like, once you become aware of shifting realities and stuff, like you realize when they shift fast, it's like something's going on in here, right? Like it's, it's kind of like what's going on in here. And I, realized or knew about Pleiades and that I am actually from there and that I am a light worker as well. And I'm like, I don't even know what those things are, right? Um, but yeah, all this information, like there is definitely communication in this realm, right? Like it's like literally when your eye opens, you just become this like open awareness of things that you were not aware of before. <laughs> so, yeah. So how did how did the second awakening affect your life and how was that different from the first one? Okay. Well, that one first of all, um I barely had anybody like on Facebook. Like I had about a thousand or less people there and they were all like my yoga students, my dance students because I was a yoga and dance studio owner for years. And so all of a sudden, all these friend requests, and I'm like, what is this? And when I started looking at their, cause it was like nonstop, like it was very odd. Like I've never gotten friend requests before like that. Um, and they were literally like masses of people coming and I realized a pattern, like they were all kind of like light workers or uh, really spiritual people, like, all of them the same. It's like this mass of people. So I ask, I remember asking on Facebook, I'm like, uh, like, is this like spam or something? Like, what, what is this? And all, a lot of people started telling me the same thing. It's like, no, we also experienced that. So it's almost like this was, I mean, everything is meant to be right. But it's like almost all this, like light workers or people in this path or in this realm at different stages of our journeys like we're meant to meet because like a lot of them were like yeah and we all had the same friends like you know it, like it was all the same yeah. people friends of the friends so it's like it became this online community in a way right um so how did this change in me well definitely um knowing about the 80s like you know this other like star cluster or whatever, like more life outside, like I would have never really thought about it. Cause you know, we've always been taught that planets are empty and there's nothing else but us and things like that. So it's like it all started making sense. Um, I did meet my galactic family of light and all these things that I'm saying, I used to think that people were crazy. Like, you know, like if I would hear them, I'm like, these people are high. Like, mm -hmm. this is ridiculous, right? But once you experience them, it's like, oh my gosh, like those things are real and these people were not high. <laughs> I mean, maybe they were, but those things happen, right? Like once you open yourself to it. 
So it did change me in that sense, like getting to know these things. I experienced what an astral surgery is. Um, I experienced my physical body dying and actually becoming dirt and turning into a rose, like all this like weird stuff, right? Um, then that's when I came into manifesting as well and realizing how we really create with our thoughts, like how powerful Please hold for technical difficulties. All super connected. Like we are just all one consciousness, even though we are our individual thing. So that it helped me to think about it as the cells in our body, right? Like every cell is different and some of them are in our face and some of them are in our hands and some of them are on our back, but we are all part of one body, right? So it's individual cells, but you're part of one body. So that made completely sense to me. It's like, oh my gosh, like we are God's brain, kind of, right? Like we are God's brain. We are, each one of us is kind of like a neuron on God, on God's brains or source or whatever you call that, right? Like higher consciousness. Um, meeting my twin flame definitely uh, changed me a lot. Those on the twin flame journey, like the real twin flame. Because um, I feel like, honestly, having that experience, I really don't. Into your spiritual path like really deeper into your spiritual path um, because it's the only way that you understand these connections and why do they happen and why are they in the way that they are. Um, and all this with knowing that you're a conscious creator and that you can shift things and sh switch them according to your own thoughts, right? So I became a conscious manifester as well. Um, so yeah, it changed my life all like that, like in all those senses, right? Like um, it changed like how I see myself. It's like the first awakening helped me. How they truly are. And then the second awakening helped me see inside of me, like my own power and my own healing. So it was kind of like that for me. Yeah. Hmm. Um, now I might've missed it because you, you've been going in and out just a little bit. Um, what was, was, was there a point where you started to find out about Neville Goddard and his teachings? And how did yeah. you find out about that? Yeah, I think I came into Neville Goddard probably in the late or maybe late 2019 or early 2020s, um, my journey with manifesting actually started with the book, The Secret, which I think a lot of people kind of like start there. Um, and that's when it started. Um, I learned from Bob Proctor as well, cause trying to learn from, you know, money and, and business and also from, Joseph Murphy. So Joseph Murphy and Neville, you know, they studied together with Abdullah. So I think that's like the algorithms because I don't remember exactly like when, but I think that's when I actually came into his lectures because I also came into Earl Nightingale and like other other guys from that era, also like Alan Watts and like um, Manly P. Hall. So all these people, like I think once you kind of click on one, like the YouTube sends you like, yeah, it sends you like mostly everybody on that realm. And that is when I started um, doing Neville. And I actually have like several lectures on my channel because I started buying his books and stuff because, you know, there's a lot of Neville's lectures but they're a little bit hard to listen sometimes because they have a lot of white noise in them. So I love his voice and it's really like, I love to listen to them, but sometimes it was hard to 
just we hear the constant um, white noise. So I bought the books and started really reading them. And it's like, oh my gosh, like all the books, all the lectures, they're really referring to the same thing. They're just explained differently. But they are, they're, he's just explaining the same thing. We create with our thoughts, the God within us. We are one consciousness. Like, you know, just all these things. Like, don't, don't doubt it, right? Like, don't doubt your desires. Like, it's your, it's your path to your own ascension. Like, following your desires as you become this person that gets them. Like, it, it's, it's all about not even what you're manifesting. It's about your transformation to become the person that manifested that. Mm. so it's like everything just makes sense and it's like all connected and when i was learning about neville you know i never really went to one teacher and obsess over it i was really just learning from everything i read the kabbalion i read the um material of Ra. i read the i didn't finish the emerald tablets of thought because they had some psychedelic music that was throwing me off. <laughs> like I need more silence when I'm listening to, but I listen to, you know, Joseph Murphy, Dolores Cannon, which she talks about a lot about alien life. Um, and uh, Steve Greer, which is a little more grayer or whatever his last name is. And, you know, I learned about quantum physics. Like, so I basically was just like gathering information from all sources and then like everything started making sense because it was like oh my gosh like from you're just seeing this from all different points but it's the same it's like this lamp right like you see it from here from here from here but it's all the same lamp it's the same lamp so it's like all all of that information um just to tell you that you have the power of consciousness you're creating the world is happening from your mind to the outside not from the outside to you like so yeah that's that's basically what i came to neville yeah (laughs) so how where do you think like people get tripped up in in like manifestation or creating a world because you know i'm sure a lot of people they've read the secret or they've seen it um you know they try some positive thinking and it doesn't really work like where do you think people get caught up in that or um falling into traps i think the first thing is skepticism because we're so used to physical things and we have been trained or you know been taught since we are born a certain way right like you you open the fridge you grab food you take it to your mouth you shoo it up like it's like you like things are done a certain way so i feel that as human beings, just our human condition usually resists change. Like, for example, if we change something like the arrangement of your drawers, for example, it's like your brain wants to still go to the first drawer to get your socks, even though you know that you just changed the the socks to your closet, for example, right? Like you, you know it, but your brain still walks you through that first drawer to get your socks from there for a while, maybe for a week, maybe for two weeks, maybe for a month. And you're like, oh my gosh, like I did it again. And I went back. It's like, I think that's part of just how our human brain works. Like it's like repetition. Like you went so many times to the drawer, to the first drawer to get your socks that now it's kind of like hard to like go to your closet, even though you know that you already rearranged them. So it's like that becomes a fight in the mind because it's like, you know it, but yet your body still does the opposite, right? So it's like, like frustrate, can be frustrating. So I think that's one of the things. The other thing is that I think we've been conditioned to believe that things have to be really hard and that you have to work very hard and that you have to struggle with everything that you do and that suffering is good. Like if, you know, that thing no pain no gain it's like everybody knows about that no pain no gain and it's like okay well i guess if i'm not suffering if this is not hard then it must not be good right or or the other saying what is that like um like things that are worthy are like the ones that take longer or whatever like it's like we have all this like 
mentality that things have to take too long, they have to be too hard. Um, and it's kind of like a Debbie Downer mentality just in general. So I think that's the first thing that it's like, yeah, it can't be that easy. It can't be that easy of just me sitting down here and imagining I'm rich. Like, no, like you're crazy. I have to go to work. I have to get a career. Like, you know, it's, I think it's certain denial. Now going a little bit deeper into spirituality, I think it's fear of, of experiencing fully who we are. Like, like, you know, like, what's my mom going to say? What's my friends going to say if I do this? Uh, if I'm, if I'm get very rich, like society is going to think I'm evil because, you know, rich people are not nice or not spiritual. Or what if I, you know, or even doing YouTube lives or whatever, right? Like, I feel there's certain self-consciousness, like, do I look good? Are people going to watch me? Like, are they going to think I'm crazy? Are they going to think mm -hmm. I'm stupid? Right? Like we get into this thing. So, um, basically it's our own selves on the way. That's basically what it is. Our own thoughts of what we think, um, people are going to think or what we think is going to happen. So it's literally breaking through barriers of our own self. So I think that's one of the things that trip people at the beginning and the other one um is just like you know people are used to i think in general of people being like little soldiers right and it's like everybody marches this way they seem somebody marching the other way and it's like oh my gosh look at them look but yet everybody wants to be that soldier that is walking the other way <laughs> like everybody craves that right like mm. they pretend they don't and they criticize people that are outside of their box but in reality deep within them there is a certain like desire to be themselves not necessarily to Does it look like it's cutting on your side or just? Yeah, on my... okay. no, no, it was cutting on my side. Okay, I, you're back now. Okay, yeah. I'll just stop talking if it happens again and then I'll wait for it because then it comes back like within second. So yeah, I think that's it, right? Like, 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 I think it's just a little bit weird for people to start thinking positive about life or about themselves, right? Um, and thinking it's possible like mm. to actually do this like in my case i did it because mm. i really felt like i didn't have another choice and all these people were saying you know when i was listening to all these books and and they were um you know successful people in my eyes so i was like okay i gotta listen to these people they have something that I want. They have money or they, you know, broke um, debt or they're confident or they're healed or they have a loving relationship. Like they have something that I want. So I'm going to listen to them. So that's what I started doing. And I'm like, I don't have anything to lose. Whatever I had to lose, it's already lost. So I'm going to give it a try. So that's what I did. I just gave it a try and then literally the methods were working, you know, like when I first manifested money, like I was just like, whatever, like, I'm just going to give it a try. Why not? I'm just going to sit down and imagine it and go, cool, you know, and then, oh my gosh, I got the money. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, this works. Let's try it again. Right. So I started doing that. I just started doing that and trying the methods and, and, and listening to all this like modern coaches as well. Like everybody, everything that I could find, right? Like I wasn't believing everything right away, but I was willing to give it a try. Like right. I was willing to, well, let me test it. But I never really ditched anything and said like, really that's BS, it doesn't work. No, I was like, well, this person seems to have like, 
success or you know whatever like seems to be honest or so i'll give it a try basically um yeah that's that's how <laughs> yeah well I'm, i'd be curious there's i mean there's tons and tons of, of methods and techniques out there um is there anything that you resonated with that really worked for you and, and perhaps your clients as well yeah absolutely to me like the best one that has worked for me is mental diets because there's so many methods like you said and i do believe they all work but i do believe they work in the sense of it's not the method is the person believes in the method or feels comfortable with the method so then their manifesting powers their consciousness their energetic field shifts to that right but since we are talking to ourselves every day all day like your brain doesn't seem to stop you know like i'm someone that practices meditation and whatever so my thoughts are pretty calm and like soft waves right like i don't have that monkey mind but the majority of people do so we're basically with ourselves anyways like it's the thoughts all the time all the time even when you're talking to people like you're talking to me right now and listening to me but your mind is also thinking about other things, like maybe, you know, the time or, or what are you going to do next or whatever, like it's normal, right? Like you have all these things, so you're always with your own self. So that's why for me, manifesting is a lifestyle, even though I know we are already like born manifestors, like I said in my channel, and we're born breathing, right? Like it's we're born manifesting, but that is a lifestyle to me like i don't sit down and i'm like okay now it's time to manifest and i'm gonna manifest like a hundred dollars and then the rest of the day i just let it go like I'm, i don't it's like my whole day i am aware like if i'm gonna go to sleep i'm like today i'm gonna sleep very good like i'm excited for sleeping i sleep good like if i wake up i'm like today is gonna be an amazing day like it's gonna go so good and like if i'm cooking and i have a thought of like like i say i'm trying a new recipe and i'm like oh my gosh this might be like nasty like nobody's gonna eat it or whatever and they're all like i cut myself and i'm like no. no 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 i'm a good cook like i already know this recipe is gonna be like so delicious or whatever right so i'm constantly taking myself to no this is gonna be the best thing it's not that i don't have like opposing thoughts per se is that I know what to do with them. Like, I don't fear them anymore. Like if something comes up like, oh, what if you lose all your money? Or what if, you know, what if you like get sick? Or what if this doesn't work or whatever, right? Like, it's not that they don't come. They come, but they are very minimal now because I have imprinted my subconscious mind with so much like positive and wanted things, desirable things, right? Like like um, money is easy to make, manifesting is easy for me, I'm a master manifesting, like life is easy in general, I easily like understand all these terms, like all these things, because I created myself to be this way. Once I realize of our mental power, I'm like, okay, if I can create anything that I want, then I'm gonna turn into a master manifesting, because they're saying I can do whatever, so, Maybe I should skip ahead and just turn into a master manifest, right? Um, when I was reading something and I was like, oh my gosh, I don't understand a thing. Like, I don't know what they're talking about. Then I would catch myself and stop. And then I would just read for a couple of minutes and I'm like, I know I have the knowledge. I know I have, I know this wisdom is given to me, you know, for a reason. And I am open to learning and understanding. And I know this is going to be easy and I'm going to completely understand it. And then it would happen. Like, I remember listening to Abraham Hicks at some point, like way at the beginning. And I didn't understand the thing she was saying. But something within my soul wanted to listen. It was like, I don't know when she was talking about vortex and this and that. I'm like, I don't know what the fuck is she talking about. Like, what is that? Right? But I wanted to keep listening. And it's like my soul or my higher self or my subconscious, like whatever guidance knew that I needed that information. And eventually I understood everything, but definitely mental diets. I mean, I have done affirmations. Uh, they did help me a lot at the beginning, but I also come from like abusive past. So, you know, 
like if somebody have a pretty healthy childhood or easier childhood and marriages and whatever like you know they might not need that many affirmations but i needed a lot of shifting the way um, because my inner talk about myself was pretty negative and nasty like everything was just so down right so i had to reprogram all that um so i did use affirmations on that and also i did use scripting however i like things done fast and easy so i didn't really never did any of the methods of like write this 50 times or repeat this you know a hundred times or do this like under the moon or whatever i was like no <laughs> i'm like i'm like if i'm god consciousness and i have all the power why do i need a thousand crystals and to wait for the moon to be here <laughs> and for that i was like it doesn't make any sense i was like this is contradicting itself so i like things easy just in general in my life i like things easy so i also started affirming for that i'm like i live a life of ease peace joy love and abundance like just like that i started repeating repeating and just seeing all these affirmations become true in my life when I was first starting, like back on 2019. And I was like, okay, affirming definitely works. And then that's when I started realizing, well, affirming works because it changed your way, core way of thinking. So once it changes. Oh, all right. Okay, so there once this <laughs> once this changes, you know, here and since we create with this, right, our, our inner slides, then your external world changes. So it all made sense to me because I'm like, oh my gosh, we grew up learning some stuff at home. However, they told you, right, like grab the spoon like this, do this, eat like that, and it was all repetition. So we're not doing anything really different. We're just realizing how we did it. And you go to school and they teach you the things over and over. Same thing. You got to repeat your ABCs. You got to sing it over and over. You got to do this. You got to do the math like 50,000 times for a year. You learn how to add and subtract, right? It, and it's all repetition, repetition, repetition. And that's the same thing. Like when you go in life, when you go to work, when you get into relationships, friendships, whatever, you act and you apply things and you act based on what you have learned by observation and by repetition. So therefore you leave and create the same things that you were thinking, right? It's like a cycle. So when I realized that, like, I mean, cause I was reading about it, right? And listening to the audiobooks and people are explaining it, but it's a very different thing to get knowledge and just have it there like you're just this bucket of talking knowledge versus when you actually see it apply it and experience it it's not the same at all right and it makes me think of people that have given me advice on my children for example when they don't have any kids mm. it's like you can know everything about kids but you have never lived with kids you have not birthed a child you don't know like not throwing shade or anything, but it's like, you don't know, you don't know until you are actually there, right? Like, it's like, it's like I can go and learn everything about a shark, but I've never been a shark. I really don't know. It's, it's based from my perspective of studying the shark. So you can't really like really experience these things until you do, if that makes sense, right? Like, so we really don't need to be reading all this like books and things and next video after the other videos, like most people don't apply the things. <laughs> so I think yeah. that really helped me um, like advance fast in my journey that I literally was applying everything and I have been diligently applying everything since day one. Like I made a commitment to myself and I'm like, I'm gonna transform myself, I'm gonna heal myself um, I don't want to be this person that is broke anymore. I don't want to be this person that is powerless. I don't want to be this person that is um, begging for love and attention. I don't want to be this person that 
grew up under certain abuse and and is thinking that oh i'm screwed for life i'm like uh -uh, i'm not gonna be that forever like what is this like i did not come here this can't be it like i was like we live in a beautiful planet like nature is beautiful things are beautiful animals seem to be having a lot of fun and i'm like why the fuck am i not having a lot of fun why why what is it about my race or the humanness that is keeping me from being happy like what is this why is everybody depressed why is everybody like why like i just started and i'm like i don't want to be that i don't want to be that i don't want to do that i don't want to be living like that so that's what really pushed me into doing this and it really just takes discipline it really takes discipline and focus like like you really take a decision and not a wishful thinking you really take a decision and you make a commitment to yourself this is a new life that i'm gonna leave and i'm not gonna stop until i get there and that's how you get there <laughs> like, that's it just yeah. a commitment and persistence right persisting in the wish fulfilled yeah you have to because it's like you know like Neville taught it like that, but it's really all about vibration, right? Like for example, Neville teaches living in the wish fulfill, but what is living in the wish fulfill? It's still creating with your thoughts. So you're creating the reality that you want to move on. So you're shifting realities to that reality by living in the end. You're having focused thought on what you want. You're denying what you're seeing here, right? Like you don't want this reality anymore. So you keep living in your mind in the new reality that you want to be. And that shifts your vibration. Because thinking about that, you know, it's like what he calls states. But in reality, the states are vibratory, right? Like so you get into this mental state and that brings you to a certain frequency, right? Like if I imagine myself as a millionaire, I feel this abundance, this expansion. It's not about the money. It's about expansion. It feels expansive. It's like, wow, I can do that no matter what. I have broken upon my limitations of thinking that only a celebrity can be a millionaire or only a doctor can be a millionaire or whatever, right? Like, it's like, no, why? Why? Who said that? Right. So it's like you open yourself, you expand your consciousness into something new. So, yeah, you live in the end and we should always be living in the end of things. Like like I said earlier, if I'm cooking, what is the end of cooking is having a delicious meal. If I'm cleaning, what is the end living on the end of cleaning is like I want to do this fast and get over it with. Right. And I want cleaning to be easy. Because those are things that we do on a daily, you know, on a daily basis. If I'm if I'm studying, like I want information to be easy for me to digest and understand. If I'm having a relationship, I want the relationship to be easy and fun. And why do they have to be, you know, difficult, right? So yeah, it's a constant living in the end, but. Um, I feel majority of people or when people are just starting to learn this, they think like they're activating a switch. Oh, okay, I'm gonna manifest right now. Okay, I'm gonna live in the end right now. And they just live on the end for whatever they're doing, right? And then they continue their life however they're doing with their inner dialogue on something else, like on autopilot of like, for example, let's say somebody is manifesting marriage and they go and sit down and they're like, okay, I'm gonna live in the end. And I'm gonna like imagine myself getting married and whatever. And the rest of the day, they're all talking about how they don't have a partner and they haven't found anybody and that it's so difficult to get somebody. Like that is literally just canceling everything that you did. So that's why it is a lifestyle. And this lifestyle comes with practice because we're used to telling ourselves why we cannot do things. So the whole idea is to revert everything into why can we do it? Why is it easy? Why, why can I live the life that I want? Why, why can I be whomever I want, change my physical appearance or, you know, whatever, be famous or be healthy. Like I started doing a lot of um, experiments per se with my body too. Cause I was like, okay, if I can control anything, 
then I can control my body too. So I started changing things like, like for example, if I was mm, being, I don't know, like, oh, if I eat this, like it makes me dizzy, like something. Then I started doing the little things like that. I'm like, no, well, I don't want this thing to make me dizzy because I really, really like it. So no, I'm gonna shift it. And this never made me dizzy. I don't know where I got that idea. Like, huh. no, I can totally eat that. So I started changing little things like that, but it's all about being aware, right? Like being aware of what are you thinking moment to moment. Like I did other little things too. Like, like I love ordering on Amazon cause it's like super easy. I don't have to go shopping. Like, you know, it's right there. And there was a time where things would come too big, too small, this and that. And then I realized that it was literally reflecting my thoughts. When I was buying something, I would be thinking like, oh my gosh, I wonder if this is going to fit me. Like, you know, so yeah, the thing would come and it would be large or too small or whatever, right? So I started shifting that. And if I was going to order something, I will be there until I felt comfortable and confident that this was my size. Like either mm -hmm. re reading reviews or observing pictures or, you know, making the picture really large and making sure that everything was going to be perfect for my body, whatever. Because I was like, I don't want to be returning anything on Amazon. And, you know, you really make it a lifestyle because it might look like silly things, but it's like, this is our life, man. Like, cooking and cleaning and going to school and driving and putting gas and brushing your teeth. And you know, it, that is life. Like that is what we do. Why? I don't know. And that is what we do every day. <laughs> and it's a, it's a pattern. It's like some days I have to really take my mind away because it drives me nuts to know that the same day is like groundhog day. Like I'm doing the same yeah. thing. I walk the same stairs and I get the coffee and it's like, why am I doing this? It's like, I am this video game, right? So <laughs> like sometimes that drives me nuts, but I'm like, okay, I'm already here and these things are happening for whatever reason. I comprehend to a certain extent, but I feel I don't have the whole picture. I don't think anybody has it. And then I'm like, well, then I'm going to make it as easy as I can. And that's how I manifested myself not working. Cause I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't, I don't want to do this. Like I'm not happy. So pursuing happiness, really it's, it's, it's an answer, but a lot of us are afraid, right? Cause yep. happy people are kind of like not very normal. Like it's like, how can you be happy? Look at it around. And it's like, you know, so it's like, I really feel that as a collective humanity, that's where we're trying to get to actually be happy. Why? Because we can't, because why not? Like, that's it because why not? Right? Mm. Like, so yeah, that's, I don't know. I hold these thoughts all the time. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I'm sure this is very common because because my mind is going, well, it can't be that simple to just simply decide this is how things are going to be. And it happens. You know, that's this what my, what my, you know, what my mind is telling me. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I think that's a, that's a common thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so a lot of coaches talk about letting go when it comes to not, not only just like the healing, but also manifestation, um, is letting go something that is necessary, like letting go of our manifestations, um, letting go of resistance, what, what, what have you, or do we simply, you know, we simply just follow a mental diet. Um, how do we understand letting go? Okay. So letting go, it can go in different ways. However, like I have manifested a bunch of things. And I have manifested them letting go and not letting go. Cause sometimes you can't let it go. Like, like, you know, when I was working on my money, like I was in $20,000 debt. I had zero income. Like I did have alimony, but that was like exactly to pay everything exactly like month to month, living paycheck to paycheck. And from my work, I had no income. Like everything was expenses, expenses. And I didn't know what was going to happen. Right. But I was understanding and studying all these things and applying it, of course, every single day, every single day, every single day. I'm like, this has to do something. 
Like, because every action, every cause has an effect. I'm like, this has to have an effect. Like, you know, so I didn't let it go all the time. Like the money thing, I didn't let it go. I was obsessively affirming and thinking and listening to subliminals. So, and I still manifested it, right? There were days that I was very confident and there were days that I was like, I don't think this can happen. I don't know what it's gonna happen, right? Um, but I think what it did in my experience, the not letting go, it got me where I am now. And right now I can totally, probably like 90, 95% let go of the money thing because my confidence with the money is just so confident if that makes sense, right? So I didn't let it go at the beginning. I think it's a process. I don't think you can just mm. like let it go. You will get there, right? Like we all get there and it's in different sections too, right? Like one is your money, one is your health, one is your uh, love life, one is your whatever, your career. Like they're not all the same because certain things are gonna be a lot easier for you, right? And other things, are going to be a little bit harder or get a little more work on it, right? And it's okay. Like I do certain things where I can like go really easy because I don't have hangups. I really don't care. Like, like if somebody tells me, for example, that, I don't know, this doesn't really happen, but if somebody is like, um, I don't wanna be your friend or something like that, like I really don't care because I understand that people come at the right timing. And I have no attachment to people. It's not that I don't love people, but I'm really not attached to people. I understand that we're part of a whole and if they come to my life, I welcome them and they might be my best friend for a month or two or a year or 10 years. And when it's time for them to go, because our connection is done, like working together during that path is fine. So I'm okay. Like. I can easily let go. That does mean that I don't miss them or whatever. No, of course, but I'm not attached. Like I'm not needy. And I taught myself during those two years to not be needy of anything. Like just by centering myself and knowing my power and realizing that I really have everything that I need within me. I don't need to do anything, right? So it's just old behaviors. We're used to do things. We're used to do, and we feel that if we let it go, it means we're not gonna have it. But in this realm, in the five, fifth density or energetic or mental, however you call it, it's different. If we let go, it means trust, right? It's like, it's like for example, uh, okay, I went zip lining. First time zip lining. And I'm there on the zip lines, and you're really just hanging out from those two little, like, it looks like a seat belt material, right? But I'm pretty sure somebody has fallen out of those at some point, right? They probably just don't say it. So it's like, well, you know, when I was there and it was high, you know, where we're going on top of these waterfalls and stuff, and I'm like, well, there's a possibility that I fall. I mean, there is. But I was like, well, I have to die anyways. So, <laughs> you know, this would be nice, a nice fall, I guess, like a nice exit. Like, it will look pretty. Like, not that I wanted to. I mean, of course, I'm sure I will be freaking out a little bit. Like, you know, the thing is breaking, right? But it's like you just trust. You trust that they're gonna work. You trust that the person that put it on you knew and checked them right and whatever. And you're just like, okay, like, or you know, I went to the in our airplane. Like, I just trust that the pilot knows. Like, I like we trust certain things, right? But we don't trust other things because we believe that oh, there's not a possibility that somebody just sneak into the airplane and. I don't know, kill the pilot and it doesn't know how to drive and is sitting there pretending to be the pilot. Like, we don't really believe that, but it is a possibility, <laughs> but we just don't believe it. Or we don't believe that the pilot decided to put a bomb that day because he woke up mad or I don't know, right? We trust the pilot. Right. We trust that 
we trust them with our lives, literally, like we're going on an airplane, right? And so we don't question those things. Um, so, you know, I, I think that um, it is all about trusting the process and the life, and this comes with practice. Letting go comes with practice because if you, let's go back to childhood, which I think that's where it all starts. When you're a child and they're teaching you to go swimming, for example, or go to the ocean and you're scared, most children are scared, right? Like, or they don't know and they just jump into it and, and then they have a bad experience, right? Like they go running to the ocean and a wave comes and they're almost drowning and then they don't want to go back again. Oh, never trying that again, right? Or they're just afraid to begin with. So what happens? They have to build trust, right? Like there is a mom or the dad and, and splashing a little water and putting a foot there and carrying it and holding them and until the kid learns to trust the water, right? Like that's just an example. So it is no different. We're learning to trust our inner power. We're learning to trust and to move ourselves from being skeptical to open the possibility to be this powerful manifester like which we already are but we're just manifesting crap that we don't want because we don't we don't know that we're doing that it's like in many of my videos i i compare it to breathing it's like you're breathing since you were born if you did not breathe you were dead right so you have to breathe you didn't know you were breathing until you went to school and somebody told you hey you have lungs inside you know and, and <laughs> you know, air comes in and you're like, oh, okay, right? And then you get more deeper, like when you come to, for example, like Wim Hof or yoga, breathing techniques, or, you know, you got to breathe like this, you control your breath and this happens, right? Like you hold the breath for a minute and, and you know, this is going to do this to your system and to your mind. And But you're still breathing. You were always breathing. You just didn't know that you could achieve those things by controlling your breath. So... Is the same thing you have always been a manifester we have always been manifesting and you know our experiences repeat and repeat and repeat based on what we experience that's just how it works just like the breathing the breathing the oxygen is like pulled in it's transforming to carbon dioxide it's expelled and then repeats 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 right so it's no different but now we're aware and we're like, oh my gosh, I've been only keeping poor thoughts. I've been telling myself that I'm never going to make money. I've been telling myself that manifesting is hard. I've been telling myself that um, I only attract women that are cheaters or whatever it is, our, our stories that we make, right? And when we bring them upon and so they become our reality. We're really speaking our existence out and thinking our existence out. And then once we realize, then it's hard because it's something new. It's like, no, I can't let it go. Can't let it go. Can't let it go because somebody else is going to grab it or mm -hmm. it's not going to happen for me. But once you, at least that's how it happened to me. Like I said, I was just testing everything and then realizing it worked. And then I was like, okay, then I'm going to give it again. I'm going to give it again a try. I'm going to give it again a try. Um, you know, I manifested many other things, but the main one that I talk about is money because I know money is a big thing for people. Like people want money or need money or have the attachment to money. And a lot of people don't understand the energy of money. So, you know, I paid off my debt of $20,000. Then I manifested $1,000. Then I manifested $10,000. Then I manifested $380,000, right? And now I'm going for the million. And it's like, you realize it's all the same process and it's all in your mind. When you start thinking like, I remember thinking there was a time where I was like, there's no way I could ever be a millionaire. There's no way. Like, there's no way that is for like, I don't know, for a president or for a celebrity. Like, you know, that's way out of my league. Like, no. And then as I started, you know, manifesting more money or becoming more comfortable with money and i was still doing my affirmation subliminals reprogramming my mind out of lack i started seeing all these people that are really young or normal people that are millionaires 
and even multi-millionaires, just a normal person, you know, like, oh, I started selling soaps and now I'm a millionaire, like, just like that, you know, and I was like, okay, if all these people can, then I can. And then I started realizing, you know, because also what we become aware of is what we bring up to life, right? So I started really encountering a lot of people that were millionaires. And I was like, okay, this is pretty cool. There's actually a lot of millionaires. Like there's not only 10 million, 10, 10 millionaires. Like there's actually thousands and thousands of millionaires. So I'm like, why am I not one of them? Like I have choices. I'm either a millionaire or I'm not. So, well, I want to be a millionaire, right? Like, <laughs> you take decisions. Because it's really like that. And I started telling myself to that on a daily basis. Hmm. Who do I want to be? I have the choice. I really do have the choice based on my thoughts. Do I want to be the person that is successful? Or do I want to be the person that is not successful? Because it's usually a fork, right, on decisions. Either you're, you are or you're not. You're like, like Neville says, right? You can't be serving two masters. Either you are or you're not. So I started deciding I am. I want to be this. I want to be this. And it is a decision. Like at the beginning, my decisions were a little weak. All I knew is that I didn't want to be where I was. But I couldn't just wake up one day and say, oh, I'm going to be a millionaire. Like I didn't have that internal fire or confidence it was like a muscle like it got built up where i was like oh cool i can actually decide no this is what i want to do no this is what it's going to happen like i remember uh like for example i also started ignoring society i hope Here we are. Okay. <laughs> I started ignoring I started ignoring like societal rules. So when the whole mask thing started, I didn't want to wear it. But I am not somebody to go and fight people and be at the door like I'm not putting it on and like that's just not my personality. But I was learning all about this and was like, hmm, I'm gonna like practice this. I'm gonna test it. And I remember first time I went to Home Depot, which is like a hardware store. And I was like, I'm not wearing my mask. And if they tell me at the door to leave, I'll just leave. Like, you know, I really had no like hangups. I was like, whatever happens, I'm just testing it. So I went in and everybody was with their mask. I went into the store except for one man. Everybody was wearing their mask and I was not wearing it. And it was when the rules were very strict. Like everybody has to have it and this and that. It was the whole pandemic had just started. And I was like, I'm just gonna test it. So nothing happened. Like nobody said anything. People were nice to me and everything, but I was like, oh, cool. Like, you know, I can do this. Then I used to have my yoga studio. They say, oh, you gotta close all your services and this and that. And I was like, like, I was like, I'm not closing. I don't wanna close. So I knew that somebody could come and tell me, hey, you're breaking the rules or whatever. And I was like, well, I'll wait for that moment. In the meantime, I'm not closing. So I didn't close and that never happened. Nobody ever came and told me anything. So that's when I started realizing you really can bypass or surpass any rule, anything, if you believe it in your mind. I got myself out of bills, out of things like court cases, like, cause I just like, I was like, nope, I don't want that. Because I realized that moment to moment, we accept things. Like, for example, let's say you go outside right now and you see you got a ticket on your, on your car. That moment when you see the ticket, something inside you says, I accept this ticket or I don't. You don't want the ticket, obviously, but something within you, whether you like like bitch about it and be like oh my gosh i gotta take it and whatever but it's like you're accepting that you're gonna pay it mm. or something inside of you once you become a conscious manifestor say i'm not paying this nope not paying it and it's something very peaceful there's no fight in that you're just like no i don't wanna 
Like, you know, whatever happens, happens. I'm not paying that. I don't know how it's going to happen, but I'm not paying that. And period. And you're able to let it go. So I did experience a lot of times things like that. I was like, whatever. Let it happen. How it's going to happen. I don't care. Like, I know this is going to work out for me. Because that's another umbrella belief that I've always had. Like, everything is always working out for me and things are easy for me. Because I want to. Because I was like, no, I already had hard stuff. I don't want to have hard stuff anymore. I don't want to. Like, I literally, like, energetically felt a repulsion, a rejection to living the life that I was living. Like, having to accept whatever. Like, having to be like, well, you know, some people get it, some people don't. Some people are lucky, some people don't. Like, it came a time where I was like, no. Like, either I get what I want or I don't want anything. And I think that energy, like, it's needed to a point of, like, really breaking through your own limitations. Where you're like, you know what? I don't want to be this, like... I don't know, like um, having bad grades all my life. Like, I don't want to be this, like, person that is always struggling. Like, no, from now on, I'm going to be the best student, period. And in your mind, you're like, no, I'm going to be the best student. I'm going to be the best student. Like, it's an inner desire. That's why, like, for example, I have in one of my videos, there's um, Napoleon Hill, which he wrote um, Think and Grow Rich. And he has a chapter on sex transmutation because, and there's other books that, you know, talk about that, but because sexual desire is that burning fire where you like got to have it, right? Like you're aroused, you got to have it. Like, it's like almost nothing can stop you. Like it's such a strong force. So it talks about using that force and transmuting it to what you want. Like the same way that you have this desire turning into your desire to get what you want or to get what you want, mm. right? Like this igniting power. So, yeah, that is that is like, it really just takes practice and perseverance and persistence. It's like you will either persist on being your old version of yourself and your old thinking, or you persist in this new version that you want to become. It's no different than an athlete, for example, an athlete starts and maybe doesn't even know how to run or whatever, right? And, and it's like, but it starts running and then, you know, learns about training and learns about this and now about that. And now the new shoes and this technique and, and it builds a muscle and confidence into being this amazing runner. And then it just goes and competes and wins because it knows already how to manage its, his energy and, and, you know, how to sprint or how to, you know, whatever it's doing to win. And it's the same with everything else, right? And so when, when it's manifesting, it's, it's the same thing. You just, you just do it and 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 do it no matter what. That's what yeah. I did. Like, I didn't care if I was manifesting good or, or not like yes i had my doubts and i'm like oh my gosh like am i affirming enough or this or that but i never stopped and i think that really makes a difference you just don't stop like i showed up for myself every day and again and again and i'm like i gotta figure out how this works and a lot of thinking i spend a lot of time alone so i'll be like okay this manifested very easy what did i do so i would do reverse engineering right what did i do when did i actually start thinking about this how did it feel when i started thinking about this you know and just going in like just meditating upon like, how did i do it how did i do it it's like you're going to um basketball court or whatever and you throw and the first one makes it and you're like, oh my gosh, you know, and then you try again and you're, you can't do it. And mm -hmm. again, you can't do it. You can't even reach the rim. And I'm like, how did I do it? So you start going back. Oh, I think I was standing like this. Oh, I think I bent my knees a little bit. Oh, I think I hopped. Oh, I think I did my hand like that, right? So you just go back and then you try it again. You try it again. You try it again. But yeah, there's no other way. Like, you know, it's a lifestyle. You just change your lifestyle. It's like... 
becoming a vegan. Like, you know, you got to transition your meals until you become a vegan. You can't really go cold vegan and stick with it. I think that will be really harsh for your mind, your body, like everything, right? So you start slowly transitioning. Step by step. Uh, yeah. 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 You know, you reminded me, and I love the athlete analogy and basketball and all of that. Uh, a mentor of mine, he always says, um, you're always practicing something. You know, and that, that just stuck with me. So yeah. um, where where can people contact you or or find you if they they want to help with it with manifesting or with spiritual awakening? Um, how can they contact you? Oh, well, they can find me on my Instagram. It's called um, My Consciousness Evolution. Uh, they can find me on my website, My Consciousness Evolution. <laughs> I have a Facebook group also called Consciousness Evolution. And I have, um, well, my YouTube channel is called Miriam Valenzuela. So you can totally, you know, look at my teachings out there or reach out through those, um, through the media, yeah. Awesome. And Miriam just has an, like a really wonderful, I mean, you put a lot of content, a lot of great content. Um, Thank so you. like, I just really, you know, everyone should check out Miriam's channel. And I should have all those links uh, in the description below. Um, maybe last question here is, is what's, the, uh, what's the impact you would like to have on the world? Oh, well, I really, really, really want to help people do all this healing and manifesting because when I was learning about all this ascension thing and stuff, and we're all one consciousness, so my spiritual awakening is great and my ascension is great but we really don't ascend if everybody else doesn't ascend if that makes sense right it's like yeah. it's like having one healthy cell and the rest are kind of like not there so you want us a whole right because ultimately all this ascension spirituality manifestation is to bring us into the state of alignment the state of flow which is the state of love where everything is there's no worry there's no fear you're just in a state of love uh which is our natural state and that's where we should all be so that is my goal as i share all these things um i want to help people break free from their sufferings their past limitations, any sort of abuse or things where they feel guilty about things they did in their past. And just knowing that they don't have to be suffering or struggling or being in poverty or like sick or even aging and decaying. Like all this is just reprogrammation. So we can all change our reprogramming. So yeah, I'm, I'm very passionate about reaching as many people as I can um, to help them change their lives. This is going to benefit everybody. We'll create a, the, the, what I talk in some of my videos, the 5D earth, right? The new earth. That's where we're heading towards to, or our goal of people that are on this path at a deeper level, that's, that they understand this collective ascension. That's where we want to get everybody, right? Because everybody everybody evolves together right like it's great that i have those experiences but i also want to see the rest of the people rest of humanity reaching these states instead of living in fear and and you know worry and sadness and jealousy and anger and all those low vibrational states yeah yeah well miriam that sounds like an amazing plan and thank you so <laughs> much for the work that you do um, thank and thank you for, for coming on and having this chat. Thank you so much, Justin. I really, really enjoy it. Thank you. All right, guys. I'll see you.